Hey guys, it's your girl Didi, and you're tuned into the Called Out podcast where it's all things pertaining to Christ. So, guys, today I am with Tommy Wa or Tommy Wa TP, Tommy Wa 2.0. What are you going to call me? Tommy Wa. <laughs> um, today, as you guys can see by the title, so we're going to be talking about painful separation, hmm. losing to gain Christ. Amen. So, before we start, I'm just going to open us up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for the privilege to come here today to speak to your people. Father, Lord, we just want to pray that as we speak, may your Holy Spirit be present here today. Father, you say where two or more are gathered in your name that you are in the midst of them. So we thank you, Lord, that we know that your spirit is here. Lord, I just want to pray for myself and Tommy that as we speak, that it will not be us speaking or Heavenly Father, it will not be the flesh, but it will be everything to do with you, Father, Lord. We pray that you will arrest our tongue and speak through us, oh God. We pray that as we do this episode, that it will edify somebody who's listed today, Father Lord, that it will help people to get closer to you, Father Lord, and that the result will be that they'll give their life to you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so obviously, as I had said, that today's episode is about painful separation. Mm -hmm. Firstly, this title comes from you. So I do actually want to ask you, like, how did you, like, get this title? This is all inspiration from Pastor Randolph from the church, KAC. Just been watching some things and then, just picking up on what painful separation is. So I did further research, learning from different men of God and came to, to to the understanding of what painful separation is. And ever since, that's literally my whole life. I just talk about painful separation. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. true, please. <laughs> <laughs> literally true. <laughs> so like, what does that mean to you, like specifically? Painful separation is the departure from things that mean the most to you. Wow. In order for you to fully fulfill your purpose where God has called you to be. Kadawa. <laughs> yeah it's getting deep so on you know doing research on this i found a scripture which i do want to take our reading from the scripture which is second corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 17 and the bible reads do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what accord has christ with belial or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Amen. 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 Honestly, a deep scripture. But we just want to um, jump straight into it anyways. And I do want to ask you like, what was like the hardest thing you had to like separate from in order to like get closer to Christ? Eish, for me, like let me give you a quick backstory. So I would say my serious, serious journey with Christ started around that like, April 2022. Mm -hmm. And then from there till now, I was working in the music industry. Oh, wow. And I was like quite deep in it. Like wow. it got to the point where it's almost like everything that I had prayed for came yeah. to pass yeah, that's deep. and then some revelation came to me in January of this year mm. and then just like that I got told listen you need to cut it off wow everything that I've worked towards wow. just finished and it's like almost it's like my whole life I didn't know what to do I just went back to just normal university student just Hi. being there like like one look I didn't <laughs> I don't know what to do with my life like that yeah. this was everything that I almost wished for and you're telling me that I have to depart from this yeah. thing it wasn't making sense yeah. but so who told you like they had to part the partner was like council or, like during prayer. Oh wow. Yeah. So like just hear the voice of God like clear just like tell me why like you have to let it go. Essentially. So there's there's something that I've I've come to the conclusion of it's like once you hear things certain times like let's say two, three times, mm -hmm. four times, five times, it's a confirmation from God. Okay. And the more you keep on delaying that calling and the more you delay things, the less you're able to hear from him because he's yeah. given you the signs, you're he's been telling something. you, he's been telling you. And it's not until you obey for you to see your full season of manifestation. Yeah, that's deep. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. So, yeah, so whilst I was working in the music industry, it's like, I just, I heard so much. Everyone was like, music, 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 music. Like, on TikTok, it was big back then. People like, secular, secular, secular. I was like, <laughs> rush. And you know, one thing about me is that I used to almost try and, I tried to comfort myself by using, I think it's, it's Galatians 5.18, it says, for we are not under the law. Oh my yeah. days, people well, like that stuff. Say no, I'm under grace, so I don't have to. Thing. I was one of them. I said, ah, me, I'm not convicted by music. You just did to yourself. Me, I'm, I'm listening. I'll, I'll be listening to my, I need the book. I, I hey, Lord, help us. I was one of them. I was, I was like, you know me what? Too, it, it's well. a personal God conviction, but yeah, certain revelations show me that, listen, the path from it. 
Wow, that's deep. I'll say it. Then after you departed from it, then you was just doing university. Yeah, just carrying on with my TikTok uni, and I just felt kind of empty. Chai. So now the new year. Oh God, this one was deep. The new year had started yet. Yeah. I had written down a list of so many goals I want to achieve mm. this year. Mm. And all of them were around the music. music. Exactly. I had I had so many big plans. Yeah. And then you're telling me one month into the year, all of those plans it's are gone are done. And then one thing I do, yeah, at the end of each year, I write a letter to myself saying, Oh, that's nice. This is what is gonna happen. This is what's this is how your life is gonna be. And then mm-hmm. each year I'm like, Well done, Tomo, you've done it. <laughs> Clap for yourself. <laughs> This year, I know when I will open that letter, <laughs> it's gonna, it's not Finish. gonna be heartbreak at all. Because yeah, amen. this year has actually been one of the better years for me, actually, because spiritually, mm. I feel intact with everything, and that's due to the painful separation. Yeah, that experience. That's deep. That's deep. And what you say that now you feel spiritually good due to the painful separation. It's like sometimes when you go through that season, you're just like God, like empty. Like I said, mm-hmm. you're just like right, like this is everything you prayed for, mm-hmm. and now it's gone. You're thinking, okay, what next? Mm-hmm. What next? So how long did it take you to come to the realization that okay, this is for better? Like this is good. Um. You know what? Let me. I'll, I'll quickly delve into like priestly priesthood requirements. So, when it comes to priesthood requirements, there are certain things that God will tell you to consecrate. So you mm. need to. The level of consecration will be higher for certain people. Oof. And then, for me, it was a thing where I had no understanding of anything. Mm-hmm. But because of that separation, God started revealing things to me, and He wow. said, "This is what I'm calling you to do, and this is where you're going to be." And as time went on, I got ushered into certain places where I would have never expected to be. Yeah. Like the spiritual growth was like that. Like wow. God needed me at the time. Yeah. And I answered the call finally. And now as time goes on, that thing will now come into, into fruition. That's deep. That's really deep. It literally like, it's like for me, I can go into like what was like hard for me. Mm-hmm. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, so in this book, like I feel like I have lost many things. Like I feel like there's two types of like, separation in that one that's it happens naturally yeah. like i've i've lost friends but it's not like like we have beef or like mm-hmm. i cut you off it's just like naturally i'm busy for god you're busy in the world so with our lives are not compatible so naturally we're gonna like not chill anymore because i'm going to church that's you're the- going to the rave <laughs> you know i'm going bible study you're going to the club so mm-hmm. we're just doing different things so that's naturally that one isn't as painful because i filled it with christ i have you know my brothers and sisters in Christ as well. So that's okay. But then there's the one where you have to do it yourself, where you have to, you know, get the scissors and you got to cut them off. That's the thing. Oh, it's your own job. It, it, and it gets hey. deep. Like God will give you the word that you have to do it. And now, you know, you, it's up to you to, to be like obedient to God, isn't it? So uh, it takes back to December. So, you know, my church, Karis Church. Um, yeah. In December, it was our month of sacrifice. And obviously every month we have a month or something. So this month, discipleship and consolidation. Um, consolidation, amen. <laughs> yeah, so in December, it was our month of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And so in that month, we, there was a message and it was about this man yeah, in the Bible. So like he went to Jesus and he was basically telling Jesus everything that he's done, like he's doing this, he's doing that. Jesus was like, okay, yeah, but you're missing something. You need to sell all your goods, like sell oh, everything you have yeah. and give it to the poor. Mm-hmm. And he went away with like a sad countenance. Like he couldn't do this because that was one thing that he wanted. So like I was in church and like was being preached about that. And obviously it was our month of, of sacrifice. So now I felt heavy conviction from that you know, that scripture of that man who did that. And I just felt like there's this one person that I just believe I have to block. I have to get rid of. Like, I want to say this person was like, for me, it was like, that was my person. Hey, God is my person in Jesus name. But (laughs) that was like, I felt like that was my my person. Do you know what I mean? Uh So after that service now, I literally got home and I was just FaceTiming my sisters. Yeah. Um, And I was like, guys, you know what? Like, I I have to block, I have to block him. I've got to block him. And they're like, yeah, like cheer me on. They're happy, they're happy. Trust me, they was happy. Um, I wasn't happy. I was not happy. Of course not. Of course not. Because that's my person. Like, that's like my marriage. Do you Mm. get it? Um, So after this now, I literally blocked on everything. TikTok, every platform you can think of, block and delete, block and delete. And I cried. I even have a video of me. I was crying. I was crying. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) crying about my Lord Jesus. (laughs) Um, I was crying. I was crying. But literally after that, like, you know, it was like, like you were saying that God had a calling upon your life. Mm -hmm. And after you did that, like it it began to, Mm -hmm. you began to go places where you didn't think that you was going to be. And it's like, even me, like literally after that, I think it was like a day after or not long after, like 
my podcast because that was when I dropped my first episode after mm-hmm. that. Then my podcast was actually number two in Qatar, oh. and I was just like, "Wow!" Like oh. I believe that after sacrifice, like every sacrifice, I believe that God always like has something for you. Like with that act of obedience, because I moved in the act of obedience. God now excelled my podcast to a place where I didn't even expect my podcast to do so well. It was the first episode. It was already number two on Qatar. It was already doing so well. Like mm. everything was just like Qatar, like so Qatar, is. like hey, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> so after that step, like, and it's not to say that uh, that made it easier. No, please, I was still crying. Like I was still crying, and but I feel like that was the hardest thing. Um, one of the hardest things for me because it's like that was so like vital to me. So even as you was like explaining painful separation and you were saying it's like separating from something that means so much to you, mm-hmm. genuinely like, and when you see it even like that, like for, for it to be so hard for you to let go of, sometimes we need to be careful that that's not your idol because right. literally anything that you're placing above God, like you can still think like, no, God has given me this gift. They've given me this person. They've given me this job, like music industry. But you see that thing are so important that if God says, look it off, you don't do it. And it's like, you know, Abraham, like, his only son, like God was saying, sacrifice mm-hmm. it. But you see Abraham's obedience. He was going up yeah, to the mountains straight away. He was going to lock off the thing. Like, <laughs> so he was, bye-bye. Bye. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> bye. Oh, oh. like it, do you get it? He, he didn't, he didn't delay. The next morning he rose and he done that. And it's like, so when I think about Abraham, it's just deep for his act of obedience. Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously he didn't end up sacrificing him because God provided, but it still showed that he was willing to do that. And I feel like, yeah, like that was obviously one thing that was just hard for me to sacrifice. But as you said, like it, it always like, something else will always happen, something better. But that's not to say like, when God tells you to sacrifice, have in your mind like, oh, he's gonna give me money. He's gonna know because he might just tell you to sacrifice and yeah, <laughs> that's all. But yeah, so that's that what, what I wanted to find out. Like, you know, what were your hardest thing was? Mm-hmm. Um, the next thing I did want to ask you is like, um, what, like, what does it mean to fully separate? And you see, when I think of this question, I think about Saul. Like, we've been speaking about Saul oh, recently. And even right. in church, like, my pastor was um, telling us about Saul. And cool, let's think, let's think about Saul. So, in First Samuel, God had told him to lock off everything, kill everything, mm-hmm. like, take it all away. And he thought, nah, do you know what? Yeah, I want to give God this offering. <laughs> so, I'm going to spare King Ag- Agag, and I'm going to give, like, good the good spoils. Do you know what I mean? But God did not tell you that. And God, the end result of that was that God literally said, I regret placing you as king. Mm-hmm. Like, I regret. You mean, God said that I repent for a... Listen, for a king, for God to say that he repents, you must have been a silly man. Like, silly man. <laughs> that, the level of disobedience. Like, it said, it said the, the level of rebellion, like when you become re- so rebellious at that, it's called witchcraft. Oh, yes. But for that, for yes. it to reach that level, you're performing oh, witchcraft. Oh, so that, God. That rebellion. Oh, ah, God. So, so disobedience, it's, ain't, it's even witchcraft, my God. Yes. So honestly, you need to pray for grace to obey God. Because although like you can have a right mindset in that you're doing it, you might think that, oh yeah, but like my heart is in the right place. Like Saul, like, do you know what I mean? He did it because he was like, oh, I'm going to give this to God. But then obviously God was like, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Um, Literally that, like he kept behind some things. And when, oh, I was even reading First Samuel in that, that season. And what had happened, obviously after I sacrificed this person, mm. I blocked them. I still had like YouTube videos up. You know, <laughs> oh, Jesus. I still had like YouTube videos up, but after I had read this first Samuel, yeah, I was like, felt convicted. Like God had said, remove everything. When God told me to sacrifice, he didn't say just sacrifice this, mm-hmm. like do it your way. So when it comes to you actually being told to separate from something, that's what it means to separate, totally separate. Mm-hmm. You got to remove everything. Cause when God gave the instruction, kill everything, kill everything. He never said, kill what what you think is bad and keep the good and give it to me. No, he never said that. He said, remove all of that. So when you actually think about separation, it's actually removing everything. So that's why now I even had to go and delete YouTube videos. Like, hmm. YouTube videos with views, oh, part. It had God. views, oh, it had views. <laughs> like, I'm talking big bucks, you get it? But I didn't private it. I had to delete because I felt so convicted. Like, oh God, like you've actually told me to sacrifice. And yeah, I did to an extent, but like half partial obedience like it's still in a way disobeying god partial partial obedience is complete disobedience Hi. with king su he was he did 90 percent of the work but that 10 percent was the 10 percent that got him that, down uh, down if Locked you up. don't do the whole 100 mm. percent 
then you will destroy yourself. Oof. You will destroy. It's true. If you don't do the whole one hundred percent, you might as well have not have done it in the first mm-hmm. place. Because God is not going to accept that. That He's told you to do a hundred percent. He's told you to do this fully, mm-hmm. and you've not obeyed. You've done it partially. You've done it delayed. Like, like look at this for example. Like when it comes to sprinters, and they have a hundred meter race. Mm-hmm. If they get to the eighty meter mark and say, "Charlie, I've done my bit. <laughs> I'm pull- I'm pushing away." Now right. you're going to be disqualified from mm-hmm. the race because you didn't complete it. Yeah. You may have got as far as you could have, mm-hmm. but you didn't complete it. And if you don't it. complete it, you never completed your mission. And yeah. God would have yeah. taken you through so much training and so yeah. much pruning to the point where he wanted you to complete this race. But because of your partial obedience, mm-hmm. the 90%, and you lack the 10%, mm-hmm. you have gone and messed up everything. Messed and now up. God is going to have to refine you. Serious yeah. refining. Like Serious The way things. to minimize painful separation oh, yes, tell is to just obey immediately immediately if you answer the calling immediately it won't be as painful mm-hmm. if god told me right now tomorrow separate from this thing i say ah god maybe next year, maybe ha! Next year. those burdens are starting to add on now they're yeah. starting to come yeah and i'll start to see the consequences of my decisions because a man's spirituality is dependent on his decision making so those negative decisions that i'm making they're gonna they're going to impact me so so much so therefore I've just got to answer at the first calling. Yeah. There's no more delaying because once, That's as we deep. said, once again, partial this um, partial obedience is complete. Complete. Yeah, so That's the even me. I said it's kind of you said complete. Complete everything, complete everything is, <laughs> is is out. Then it makes me think like, what are some people in the Bible who like obeyed? Like obviously, I know Abraham. He's is like someone who we as in obeyed within the like within when God said separate. Yeah, like just obeyed straight away. Um, some of them didn't even get the chance. Like <laughs> Samuel, up. John the Baptist, from the babies, they were taken. Mm, that's true. Taken straight. That's deep. Like, with with Hannah, like, because imagine that with Hannah and Samuel, it was a double painful separation. So for Hannah, she had to let go of the child that she was praying for. Hannah did the P-U-S-H, pray until something <laughs> happened. She was there saying, Lord, remember Gosh. me. And then at the time when the child was now weaned, you're telling me you have to give him into the temple. Yeah. That's that crazy. Is and then Eli, Samuel himself, coming to Eli, he's probably looking at Eli like, my guy, who are you? I've never seen you in my life. Like, yeah. This is not what I'm used yeah. to. But because of that sacrifice, wow. Samuel came and Samuel was the, he, he came and just influenced Israel in such an amazing way. Wow. It was That's amazing. deep. That's deep. Do you know what? Yeah. I, and then when I, I started to think, yeah, for ways for people to know when they have to separate, mm. because I feel like sometimes we're with people, right? So say, for example, in relationship wise, like not even just like friendship as well. Um, sometimes people are like, no, like I'm not going to lock off this person because what if I'm meant to bring them to Christ? Like I'm going to preach them, I'm going to bring them to Christ. Like we shouldn't just leave people like we need I'll to preach I'll be the one to change. <laughs> I'll be the one to change. My, My friend, God. that's not your job. Forget it. Yes, no. Forget you. it. <laughs> like of course, like, yeah, like you're, you can preach to people. Mm-hmm. But it comes to a time when you see this person is actually killing you spiritually. Mm. Stop thinking that it's your job to bring them to Christ. Stop thinking that, no, but I need to preach to them. Like, let me bring them, let me bring them. Because the the chat, you like, say for example, you're on a chair, you're standing on a chair. Like, if someone's pulling you down, it's easier for them to pull you down than for you to pull them up with you on that chair. So why, like, yeah, it's a good heart. Like, as I said before, you can have a good heart behind it. Like, no, but I want to bring them to Christ. Hey, the time you're trying, Satan is also battering and scattering you with that person, using that person. So for you, like, when you should know that, kind of to lock it off also like we were talking about idols when you know that this person is becoming like atta- you are becoming attached to this person or to this thing like Tommy while his thing mm-hmm. wasn't a person it was obviously him being in mm-hmm. the music industry my thing was a person so whatever it is that you feel like okay cool this thing I'm attached to it like always think about everything in your life if God told you to lock it off would you be okay with that because even in the Bible, like God says, you shouldn't love your mom, your son, your dad more than him. Hey, mm. do you get it? Like that's so deep that as much as your mom, like your dad, like your son, your like someone who you literally gave birth to, he said you shouldn't love them more than him. So how much more materialistic things? You know what the funny thing is? It says it doesn't say, but you can infer that we will be separated from everything, mm. whether it be painful. Or not pay for we're going to be separated from everything mm. and the only separation that we won't have is from the love of god Chai. oh very man <laughs> we're separated like as i look at you right now a day is gonna come unfortunately where it's not <laughs> gonna be like that we're gonna be separated <laughs> oh and it could be painful i'll be there I oh be there no like it's, it's gonna happen but 
the love of God, you can never be separated. Yeah. From. So everybody has to understand that a pain, a time of painful separation will come. And as it says in Romans eight, is it eight, eight, eighteen like, or eight nineteen? Yeah. It says in order for us to be glorified with Him, we must also suffer wow. with Him. So. Kata. If we do not enjoy the same sort of suffering, if we don't have any sort of suffering, mm -hmm. then we're not able to ever live in the priesthood calling that God, wow. has, God has placed for us. Wow. Until we fully separate ourselves and until we face those seasons of sufferings, mm -hmm. that's when we can finally say, listen, I can be glorified and listen, wow. I, can now, I can now even be in a light to other people. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't just first use you. In order for him to use you, he must change you. He said, follow me and I'll make you Fishers. Um, fishers of men. Man. He didn't say, follow me. For, like He said, follow me. That's the first thing, follow Hello. him. You have to follow him first. Yeah. And then he can make you Hallelujah. disciples of men. You have to listen first, follow, and then God can change you. Yeah. But if, you if, you're not, if you're not changed, God can't use you, unfortunately. You have to pray, God, bend me, hmm. break me, <laughs> make me, refine me, refine her. That hey. song, play it loud. Charlie, listen, if, if you're not ready to sing that song, don't sing it. Because we'll be judged for the empty words that we're singing. It's true, please. If you're coming saying, I, I want to be a child. But if God chides you by fire, we'll oh, not be able to, to fire. Be ah, the fire. You'll be walking see. saying, please baptize me what I've come into. Be careful what you're singing. Be careful, it's true, <laughs> But it's actually needed. And at the end it's of the true. day, like, even if we don't even say God refine me, oh, he, he has to. He, he <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, whether you say it or not, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And he has to do it. Mm -hmm. For you to be used by God, you have to be go going through those seasons where he's making you, where he's breaking you, where he's mm -hmm. molding you. So, you, like, it's necessary. So, Charlie, might as well start singing it now. <laughs> Get over. <laughs> Get it done. A, a time will come because, yeah, literally, a time will come where your timidity won't even respect you. Child. It won't respect your seasons, won't respect your timidity. Look at Sue. When he tried to hide behind the equipment, he's been anointed as king. He tried to hide behind the equipment. <laughs> it's true, he was hiding. But they him. came and pulled him from behind. He was they hiding. Said, My friend, you are meant to be a king. Yeah. There's no hiding. Yeah. So even if you try to delay it. Try. Jonah, time, Jonah, oh, that's please. Another, that's the best <laughs> You're trying to run. Don't worry. God will catch you <laughs> anyway. No and you just want to obey straight away. Because otherwise, look at the consequences. You'll be in the belly of a well. Hey, mm. God. That's not my push. That's all. In Jesus' name, God, I'll, I'll obey the call. <laughs> I'll obey it. Literally. So, um... You know what, I even was thinking that sometimes you even have to separate from, it's not always just like worldly people. It can also be believers that you have to separate from because they are not the person that is going to take you to the calling that God has upon your life. They can't take you to a place. You have assignment for your life. You have a destiny, right? And this person, it's not that they're bad. They're just not the person that is fit to take you there. And I even started to think about, you see Abraham and Lot, yeah? Like you see like, when they separate because they kept quarreling like they kept quarreling but it's not like lot is bad or abraham's bad mm -hmm. but then abraham said you know you pick whichever way you want to go this mm -hmm. way or this way and they separated at that time then obviously we see that how lot was righteous because even in i think second peter it says like righteous lot was tormented by you know the filthy conduct that he saw and heard because obviously the land that he chose i mean he was in sodom he was in gomorrah in the the filthy land do you know what i mean Disgusting. so that also just shows that the decisions you make, ah, because he chose to go to this land and then look, he was tormented. He was, his spirit was vexed by what he was seeing and hearing. But that just goes to show that it's not always that the person is bad. Like, mm. you know, the person that I separate, it's not that they're bad. Yeah. No, it's not that they hurt me. They did bad things. No, they're not bad boys. Uh, do you get it? Um, they didn't do like anything, but it's just necessary for me because I know that you being connected to me it's not going to take me to the place where God has called me to be. So you also have to think about who are you connected to? Because someone can actually drag you away from your destiny mm -hmm. because you're, you're, dwe you're dwelling in a place where God is saying, no, like you need to be separated. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to painful separation, it can be a thing where, as you said, the person will not be a bad person. Mm. They could even be as spiritual as you. But they at the be. moment when you start to idolize them, mm. God will tell you, listen, Peter, love is me. More than this. Hi. Love is Hi. This. My God. You can make people idols. You can make nice Christian people your idols. Nice Christian people. Instead of you being be, being with God, you want to now spread yourself in this place, that place. Uh, spending so much time with that person. But have you even woken up and have you I prayed? prayed. Kai. Like, and My that's God. one reason for the painful separation for us to be alone. Because in the times that we're alone, yeah. that's when God can speak to yeah. us clearly. Yeah. Because in the midst of congregations, in the midst of multiple people, mm -hmm. we like to hide behind certain baggages. We like to mm -hmm. say, okay, well, I'm with so-and-so, so, -and -so, so I, I can 
I can now do whatever. And for example, let's say God was speaking to a, he. Let's say God gave you a prophecy right now. Amen. Me and you. <laughs> let's say it. we're the same. We're literally the same people. Yeah. Only difference is, is that I'm taller, you're smaller. Mm-hmm. God, the, so let's say the man of God will now come and they will be saying, listen, this is your calling. This is the thing. We're now both confused. I'm thinking, oh, it's for me. You're thinking, oh, it's for you. <laughs> but if it was for you and I've now tried to apply it to myself, I haven't heard God clearly. Ooh. Therefore, God has to separate me oh, in order for me okay. to hear clearly. And another time when it comes to being alone is that when you're alone, you're able to go deeper into your inner personal mm-hmm. ministry. Because a lot of mm-hmm. us, we like to hide as busy people like... With, with Martha, for example. Hi! She was acting so busy, acting like she was Martha. cool, but it's not until you hide... Martha! <laughs> it's not until you put away that busyness and you say, listen, I need to spend time alone. Like Mary. When you notice that certain things, you, you may have done... There, there was one um, video that my, my pastor, Dr. Shadrach, was talking about um, on, his, on, on our Instagram. He said, a lot of us, we are lazy. We have become lazy. Yeah. And it's not because, like, um, we've become lazy because we think that because we submitted all our reports at church, at work, and all sorts, then we're not lazy. No, you're lazy if you're not walking in God's purpose towards your life. That. If you're not walking in that purpose, then you have become lazy. Mm. If God has told you, listen, my friend, you need to be doing this thing, that thing, that thing, and you're saying, oh, but I need to submit all of this stuff. Oh, no. You're now neglecting your personal relationship no. with God because there's the gathering of the assemblies and then there's the personal devotion. Mm-hmm. A lot of people miss either one and they mm-hmm. try to... Yeah. Way one more than the other and yeah. that's when the imbalance comes and when there's yeah. an imbalance there's failure and there's complete depletion Chai. so you've got to keep them nicely balanced and make sure you never neglect that personal devotion mm-hmm. that you need with God because it will just bring you into a place of self oh man honestly you said so many of those things one thing that you were saying is about like being alone like seasons of you literally need to be alone to be mm-hmm. hearing from God and I feel like sometimes us as believers like we struggle to be alone I feel like that was my thing like obviously when I had to separate from that that said person as I said that was my person Mm -hmm. like so it's like oh if I'm sad oh do you know what like let me chat to this person like do you know what I mean let me FaceTime and tell you about my life have you FaceTime good Uh, (laughs) right have I have as a good question so it's like you know that person knows so much about me like they know me like they know me Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but God needs to know you. God wants to know you. Do you get it? So why are you letting something know you so much, but God doesn't even know you? Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's so like necessary that we go through those seasons where God actually says, okay, cool. Take away all of this. Take away that. Like you, like for example, you was doing that. You was doing a music yeah, interview. I was, mark my word, I would have been up there with the big boy. <laughs> I was going clear, but painful separation. Painful separation. No, uh. it gets like that. Even reminds me like of me like on my YouTube. Like me, I was going clear, bro. I was getting all the subscribers. By now, please, I would be on 100 k mm. Trust me. But is that when I came to Christ, like no one told me like DD come off. I just felt that I just just didn't post. Like, I didn't post yeah. for many logs. And I kept trying to come back with the same type of content. Wouldn't really bang. Mm. I would come off again. I would keep coming back. It wouldn't really bang. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it, w- it was needed in that season where I wasn't posting, where I was literally just going for God. I was going for God. Mm-hmm. People say, Didi, where are you? Where are you? I'm just going for God. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm here. I'm good. I'm just going for God. Um, So I also feel like that was needed for me to know myself um, in Christ rather than just me as like YouTuber Didi. Oh, bait, you're happy. Like you think you're famous. <laughs> but no, like I knew me at, like with God and then I went for a season of I was basically nobody like to the world but somebody in Christ amen, amen. but it was like you know before it's like I would go out everyone's like did you get me a picture now I'm going out school children the, the newer school children who are going to ne- they, they don't know me at all who I know Jesus but literally <laughs> literally but who are you like it's like I'm going out now no one knows me I just became like a nobody, but it's good. Like you go through that season where now you're humble. I, please, I'm, I'm uh, nobody now. I don't think that. That's another purpose of the painful right. Season, to keep you humble. Like right. It, even your story is, is similar to mine. Like right now, my progress on TikTok could have been a lot further, mm. and the networks I could have been in could have mm. been a lot further. Mm-hmm. But because I understood my my priestlyhood calling, and I understood the requirements that I have, I know that I'm not able to do certain things. So, for example. Get invited. I, like, there are so many events. Literally, like, every week, there's an event that I've yeah. been invited to. Yeah. I've st- Ask me if I've been to one. Yeah. I've not been to any events that because I understand work. the sacrifice. And I understand, now, if I don't listen to that calling, I'm delaying things. Because some a prophet could have come down and said, listen, Tommy, in three months' time, you're going to be doing this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. The three months have now come, and nothing's happened. 
God has given me the prophecy, but because I haven't acted on that thing, I've delayed it for myself. Just. And it's not, on time, it's not until the time of obedience mm. for me to see that full manifestation, as I said earlier. Just. Once I fully, fully say, listen, God, I surrender. I'm not mm. going to hold back anymore. I'm not going to say, oh, but I want to do this. I want to dibble and dabble. No, it's complete and total surrendering. Wow. That's what will get you. That's from. deep. And that literally reminds me of Abraham because... Genesis 12, hey, hmm. in Genesis 12, God is saying that for like, you know, depart from where you are mm -hmm. to a land that I'll show you and, you know, I'll, I'll make your, your nations blessed, like I'll do this. But it wasn't until we actually see Abraham actually departing and then obviously his total obedience throughout that whole time of God's word that he said, you know, taking so many years to even come to pass. Mm -hmm. But every single time Abraham still was obedient and then we see the manifestation. Mm -hmm. So as you said, like, he literally got a word from God, like, and it many years later it came to pass. That's right. But that was through his obedience. So literally, Abraham is just—I mean, he's a father of faith. Do you know what I mean? Come mm. on, Abraham. If, let's look at Jacob real quick. Mm. Jacob and Leah. No offense Oof. to—I mean, I must say Jacob, Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. Yeah. No offense to our dear sister Rachel, <laughs> but Rachel was a bit. Child. She wasn't needed too much because. Oh God. Rachel, she. It was what Jacob wanted, mm. but it's not what God wanted. Yeah. And until Jacob finally had Leah, that's when he able, that's when he was able to have the relevant sons. No offense, the Levites wow. and the prophet, um, wow. uh, the the family of Judah. Because the Levites, we saw them with the priesthood. I mean, yeah, with with the priest, the the line of the priest, and then mm -hmm. with the tribe of Judah. That's where Jesus came from. Yeah. Those were the two relevant people, and they came from Leah's side. Ha. And where do we hear of Rachel's people nowadays? Nowhere to be seen, particularly, right. because it, it, sometimes we think that what we want is best for us but god is telling us no mm. i want this for you mm. and you can still see some level of success in what you haven't what god hasn't called you to be mm. but it will become irrelevant Child. rachel unfortunately was not very relevant leah Get became the relevant one Child. and i know jacob tried to delay it but it happened it wow. had to happen i guess the delayed part they're like no that's deep genuinely like god's plan is always better. Mm -hmm. I mean, we like everyone says it, and it sounds That's like ironic thing. now. Like, oh, God's plan is better. It's always yeah, it literally is. Like, although it may seem that it's hard, like for me going through that separation, for me it was like, oh, like oh, this is so hard. Like, no, nah, God, trust me, it can't, it can't be that deep. But it's like I know that if I still had that person, I was still clinging on to that person. I wouldn't have spiritually grown how I was because mm -hmm. they were a setback. So when you're coming to like separate one thing is you have to not remember the former things of old like stop being attached like it's mm -hmm. time to separate so you mm -hmm. see the scripture that i read like at the beginning it literally said like separate from these things like it said that why fellowship why should a believer be fellowshipping with an unbeliever mm -hmm. um and what fellowship does likeness light have with darkness like it's just we're just called to separate genuinely and Same. Like, I even wanted to talk about reasons God wants to separate us. So I know you touched on that. Yeah. You were touching on that a lot, amen, <laughs> in the spirit. Um, but I even then, one reason why I was talking about is that he wants to fulfill his will. Mm. So then when I was thinking, I was thinking about Abraham, right? And the fact that Abraham is the father of all. Mm -hmm. And because some of his righteousness was shown through his faith. Mm. And obviously that came through Abraham obeying. And then obviously through him he had many nations. As he said, I'll bless you with the seed of all, all the nations. Mm. Um, and through that, now Abraham is actually the father of all because it, he, his righteousness was shown even before he was circumcised. Mm. This is something, yeah, this is not my own. It's from my past <laughs> amen. Um, Because he was actually saying that, you know, even before he was circumcised, that his righteousness was even shown through his faith. Do you get it? So that's how now he is the father of not just like the Jews and like the people who were circumcised, but all because his righteousness was shown in his faith. And obviously we are, don't have to be circumcised mm -hmm. physically, but through, you know, in the heart. So through Abraham doing that, that also fulfilled God's will for us, for him to be our father. And um, also I said that when he wants to use you, that's a reason why you'll be separated. Mm -hmm. So we think about Acts when, when like God was like, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work that is appointed. So literally when God wants to use you, you have to be separated, like mm -hmm. genuinely. The, I feel like in my opinion, one of the worst separations was the disciples from Jesus. Oh. The disciples, they left everything. They dropped everything to everything. follow Jesus. Everything, dropped the net. And then the Jesus net. is now saying one day, I'm going. 
I need to. So I need to go. I need to depart. So the disciples. Okay, let, let's let's see. When Jesus came down back from the mountain of transfiguration, yeah, these disciples were trying to cast out the demon, and then Jesus said, "This demon cannot come out unless it is by prayer and, and fasting. fasting." And then no. Jesus talked about. You, why, why would you mourn um, when the bride, bride, bridegroom is here? You don't need to fast whilst I'm here. Yes. So Jesus understood in that moment, I need to depart from these people. Oof. In order for these people to have authority to cast out certain demons yeah. and for them to have authority oh, to deal with principalities and powers, That's he true. needs to go for the spirit to descend. So he sent them to the upper room and he said, stay there, pray and fast until something happens. They had to wait there mm. until the spirit descended. And then we just, we saw that these people were making disciples everywhere. Wow. They were able to go into the many nations and start doing the work of Hallelujah. God. And if it wasn't for Jesus' separation, yeah. we, me and you, we might not even be here talking because oh, that painful you. separation yeah. had to happen in order for them to have authority yeah. to do the, the work. Genuinely, that's one of the deepest separations that him departing from someone mm -hmm. you've known this person like you've been doing ministry for him like obviously he did for three years you you've been close to him if i really tried that was my three-year buddy like <laughs> 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 um and like you just <laughs> sorry that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like you just have to like like they just he had to he had to leave but he literally said like it's to your advantage that i yeah. leave like because if i leave then the holy spirit will be with that's you so now we're literally filled with the holy spirit so there's literally so many benefits to being separated. Mm -hmm. I mean, for God to use you, you have to go through a period of being separated. Mm -hmm. Like you said, now you're in places where wow, you didn't think you would At be there. All. But you had to go through that period of separation. And also, like he's teaching you to depend on him, as we touched on. But it made me think of Moses. And yeah, I was researching and then I was seeing, yeah. So we know that Moses was actually, you know, where he grew up because obviously we know the story. He was yeah. in the sea, then he got caught by the Egyptians, you know. He was raised there. So the Bible which said he was trained in all the ways of the Egyptians. Obviously, later he was going to actually free the Israelites from the Egyptians. So at that point, Moses could have thought, like, I'm cool. Like, I'm literally, like, I'm, I know this. Like, I know this. So in Exodus 2.14, like, obviously we see in Exodus 2 when, you know, they was killing one of Moses' own. And, and there was literally beating him so Moses came and obviously killed the guy and then when he came back to speak to them in Exodus 2 14 there was like who made you a prince and a judge over us do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian so Moses feared and you know he went he said surely this thing is known so after that now I mean Moses was there he was trying to defend the people like he he thought he was like cool like you know he, he was like no nah, I got this do you know what I mean then after them having seen him do that and they're like who made you a judge like he felt shy so he ran and he fled but in that season of him f like fleeing god was molding him mm -hmm. god was um, allowing him to depend on him mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. so now we see when god called him the burning bush you know exodus 3 11 moses said to god who am i that i should go to pharaoh and that i should bring the children of israel out of egypt so as we was talking about humility now moses is in a place where what who am i that i should do this god i can't do this but god allowed him to go through that season so that he can see, hello, like you're not big. Yeah, mm -hmm. you was raised with the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. You might be mm -hmm. trained in them, That's but right. you need to rely on me. So now Moses obviously said, but God, like I start, I like, you know, and he said, just go, like I will put the words in your mouth. I will help you. I'll tell you what to say. I'll even send you a helper. So it was so necessary for Moses to go through that where he fled. Because then where he was, God was training him. God was molding him. God was teaching him to depend on mm. him so that when he went to obviously free the Israelites, it was not him. It wasn't the wisdom that he got from being, you know, trained with the Egyptians. No, it was God and God alone. Mm. He had to rely fully on God. So when you go through seasons of, you know, separation, now you're in a place where, okay, like, where's my life going? What am I doing? Like, where should I go? Like, mm. should I go to the left? Should I go to the right? But God's just saying, trust me, like, mm -hmm. I will literally guide your feet. I will literally take you to where mm -hmm. you are called to be. So that's another thing that I thought of, like, reasons why God will separate you or tell you to separate is, God says, yeah. you go and then I'll show you. Oof. Oh, my days. Just go. Oh, my days. You may not know where you're walking to, but just go. Just go. God will guide your feet. He will. He will take you far. He literally will. But all you have to do is go. Just go. That's it. Because, no, sometimes, I mean... It's like um, when Jesus said, wicked and adulterous generation always looking for a sign. Like some of us were always looking for the sign or we're looking for, okay, God, but like, mm. can you tell me like, okay, what's going to happen? God, I'm continue, you know, continue. Continue. I'll, I'll, I'll jump off. Okay. Yeah. I saw something yeah, on TikTok. Yeah. And it was like, what, what I 
like what I think God is gonna sound like, but what he actually sounds like. So the first thing, what I think, yeah, <laughs> it was literally <laughs> like he was like, yes, quit your job, and I'm gonna give you this money. You're gonna get ten thousand dollars each month. Da, 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 da. And he was like, yes, Lord, okay. But then what he actually says, it was just like, quit your job. And the guy was like, okay, God, like, okay, what what next? God is saying nothing. Mm. God is saying nothing. And that's the reality of it. Many of us want to hear everything, but then what's faith? Like, that's the thing. faith. Yeah. Like if God, you know what's funny? Oh, I keep on saying that, but <laughs> if God literally told us, you're doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, S, K, if he told us everything like that, yeah. we would not be Christians. At all. Why would we have any reason, reason to rely on God? Why? I don't have a purpose. I do like God. Who could be God? And that's that's <laughs> literally what I'm, I'm. That's that's how it'd be. Yeah. If I didn't have, if did God did, if God revealed His plans, so right. God will never reveal His plans in full, mm. and He does that in order for us to be reliant on Him, as He mm. did with Paul. Mm. He didn't allow Paul. I mean, He allowed Paul to face daily sufferings. He said, "I die daily." The sufferings that Poof, he was facing God. was so important for him to stay reliant on His mm-hmm. source. Once you become separated from that source, which is God you will start to lead your own self yeah. and you'll start to think it's coming from me. Hey, God. So until that that time of of complete suffering and the the complete, like, what's the word, continuous suffering, mm-hmm. we won't fully understand where God is calling us yeah. to be. Yeah. We can't. You're saying something like literally faith, Hebrews 11, 1, mm-hmm. faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Like you can't, how do you expect to have faith, belief in something you haven't seen, Cho. but you're asking God, can you tell me plan A to Z? What? Why are you asking God to tell you everything? You need to know the God that you serve. When you know the God you serve, you can be like Paul, who he was like, he, he's literally being spilt like a, a drink mm-hmm. offering, like mm-hmm. poured like it. Like he's literally going through all these things, but because he knows the God he serves, right. he doesn't need to see what's That's tomorrow. Right. He doesn't need to see what's today. He doesn't need to see all of that. That's why, you know, in Matthew 6, so don't worry about tomorrow. And it even says like, what what worrying can even add a cubit to your stature? Like you can be worried like, oh, where am I going to go? But it, like, what's the worrying doing? Like mm-hmm. you best, as Tommy always says, push, pray <laughs> until something happens. You must pray until uh, something happens. Like, that prayer is something else. I tell everybody, when you do that prayer and you don't see it, come back to me, everybody pray until something happens. Yeah. It's not pray until you're tired. Yeah. Pray until something happens. That's and it. Tell me if you don't see results. Tell me. Tell me. You'll be a liar. I'll call you a liar. <laughs> you are trying one. to gaslight me. <laughs> me. I prayed that prayer. I was I was in the dumps. I was in the market. I, I tell you. Ghost. I said, okay, I'll pray until something happens. Amen. I prayed and then peace just came. And when you know that something has happened, is either you'll hear the word, the spoken word from God, God, you you just know that it's clear. Mm-hmm. Or you'll just feel a level of peace. Amen. Like, it is dealt with. Yeah. Hannah was praying. Eli said, go in. Oh, he said, it is done. Like, oh, yeah. God, you are saying something genuinely. Oh, that's deep. Hmm. That's deep. That's deep. Um, you know, yeah, I was thinking about a scripture and it says like that you have to lose your life for Christ's sake. Like it says, whoever seeks to gain, to keep his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, you know, will gain. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just started to think that what does it actually mean to lose your life for Christ's sake? Because I thought about separation and like to separate from something, obviously you need to, you know, obviously hear that word from God and like obviously act on that. But in a way, it's also you losing your life for Christ because these things you wanted to keep, like more time if, you know, if I wasn't so like in Christ, where I didn't have Christ, do you think I'd be looking off this guy? Absolutely never that. Absolutely not. <laughs> never that, bro. <laughs> More YouTube videos coming. <laughs> <laughs> More nah, nah, nah. More YouTube videos coming, bro. It wouldn't came. Do you know what I mean? But I had to lose my life for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what does it mean to like lose your life for Christ's sake? For you to lose your life for Christ's sake means that. You may have your own desires, you may have your own dreams, mm. but if those dreams are not God's dreams, that's it, it's gone. You've got to lose it. You got to lose your life to gain Christ. Amen. If you don't lose that life, like whatever it may be, until you fully just surrender mm-hmm. and you say, Yes, Lord, your word is yes and amen, God will that's never it. be able to fully use you. And there's one thing that I always say to people I said, is this, I learned it from Pastor Randolph. It's like, God has two, he, he can literally take one person and be like, you disposable cup, I'll use it real quick and I'll throw you away. Oh, but God. then he has some glass cups that he will keep and he will rewash them, he'll keep on I, using them. I am he, use me Lord. <laughs> Please God, that, that's what <laughs> And I don't want to be a disposable cup. A disposable cup, 
person, they will just not have reached a high level of consecration, a high level of priesthood mm. because they don't know enough. And all of this priesthood stuff is based on abundance of revelation. So the more you know, the less you can do. So for you to, for you to almost lose your life for Christ, you have to do a less of what you were doing before and you have to do more in Christ. Amen. My whole life has literally become Christ. And Amen. <laughs> for me to live. Is Christ to honestly, die is gain. Honestly, if you, if you take God for, I mean, I was not even God forbid. If you take me right now, please. But I, I, I know God. where. Oh, I know. I'm confident where I, I'm, I'm like, going. In fact, I'm good. I know where I'm going. Do you get? No, honestly, like when I thought about you losing your life for Christ's sake, I was thinking that that is this that, 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 Mercy Lord, honestly, what is that? The decision, <laughs> the decisions you make. <laughs> like are not based on your feelings but based on christ yeah literally like as you're saying you your life is literally christ like christ if you tell me delete this i'll delete this mm. like in that season where i wasn't on social media if, if god told me to delete it chai we'll get deep but you know i'll do it but obviously thank god he changed it mm -hmm. and used mm -hmm. using me for him amen. amen amen um but literally the decisions you make have to be based on christ based on christ but literally time is running out so i'm gonna i'm gonna move on yeah and the last thing I'm going to ask, yeah, is how to separate, how to separate. And I thought of two points and I thought that you must stand on a word and you shouldn't remember like the former things of old. You may have mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. to add. So I said that obviously stand on a word like, you know, the reason why you separated from that is because you was in a place of prayer. You mm -hmm. heard God. Mm -hmm. He said to you, me, I was in church. I heard God. He said to me separate do you get what i mean it's always it will always come from a word that like you're you know a conviction like you're gonna so you have to stand on that word so anytime you feel like going back you realize no but god has told me so going back is disobeying him it's not disobeying me it's not me that wanted to do it it's god that told me yeah. you know and then remembering not the former things of old because it it would be it would be hard for you to you know come away from that thing because you're thinking about no but I've I've known this person for 10 years no but you know this music industry like it's gonna get me big bucks or like I'm gonna become famous you know what I mean but you need to no these things have passed away like remember not the former things of old um that's two points I got like do you have anything you want to add I feel like you've touched on it well amen thank you like, Jesus <laughs> once you stand on God's word yeah and you know that this is his will because the only way that you'll know God's will for your life is if you know the word Mm. I used to be one of those Christians that said, ah, me, I listen to gospel music, I'm a Christian. <laughs> you don't know God at that point. You don't know God. God. Will be asking, who are you? I. So, God. yes, if you don't, so for you to know God's will for you, you need to know his word. So, yeah. being reliant on his word and you say, God, is this what you're actually asking me to do? Mm -hmm. And if it aligns with the word, then yes. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's a time where you need to separate. And mm -hmm. what was the other thing that you said? I said that you should not remember the former things of old. Yeah, literally, just got to, no look back at lost life. You also oh. knew that that told me that Cut that back, back, back then. <laughs> back. You said no looking back. Just just go. Amen. Don't look back. And Don't if look you back. look back, you it's turn true. To it's true because God told him, okay, cool. Like I'm sparing you. Do you get it from this Sodom and Gomorrah, this filthy city? I'm sparing you. Don't. But the only condition is to not look back. Yeah. That's yeah. the condition. And what? Lot's wife. Oh, I'm sorry. See, so look back and look what happened to her. Pillar of salt. I mean, Where now she's you? useless. Like she can't be used by God. She's just there. Like gone so that condition is so important looking back like if you look back trust me i've done it like in this in this time of me obviously blocking and delete trust me i'm not hit guys i don't lie on my podcast trust me i'll be serious like there's been times i've looked at memories kai obviously i said i removed everything but you know like snapchat yeah. you get like that that's there but i delete some amen mm. i say i'll delete all of them <laughs> um <laughs> And I've looked at it and I'm like, Kai, God. It's not even me going to it like two years ago, memory. One year ago, memory. What's up? Uh, Snapchat, remove that fit. Wait, remove wait, 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 wait. Please, remove bro, that fit. I don't want to see some certain remove, memory. My friend, um, delete it. My God. Mm. Two years ago today. One year ago today. Three years ago today. And I'm seeing all of that on my Snap and I'm like, I deleted YouTube. I've blocked you on everything. But still, Snapchat, you want to remind me? Okay. Hmm. So that stuff, like, it has got hard. And can't lie, I've shed some tears in this season, but... Not in this season, no please, not now. Back in the day. <laughs> um, but it was so necessary, honestly, guys. So today's episode, we're literally running out of time. We literally have run out of time. But today's episode, like we just wanted to teach you guys about separating. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've heard Tommy Wan's story, you've heard my story about mm -hmm. how we separated and the benefits of it. I mean, we are happy people, trust me. Me, happy. Tommy Wan, you you know he's the happiest. Uh, me too. I'm, yeah. I'm the happiest. <laughs> I'm the happiest. And that's because we have Christ. That's Genuinely. Right. So anything that you feel like 
you're reluctant to let go of nothing nothing is better than having christ like christ is fulfilling like his sufficiency of christ mm -hmm. he is everything mm -hmm. so at the end of the day yeah it's hard like we literally we're not here to say it's easy to separate from things but at the end of the day that's how you walk into your calling that's how you walk into destiny mm -hmm. so one thing i always think about when i'm like not going back to these things i always think Okay, if I go back, I'm delaying my destiny. Mm -hmm. Or I'm aborting my destiny. Delaying your destiny. Delay, you can be the reason that your your destiny is delayed. Wow. God wants you to marry at 22, but you're doing all this Shangala, Shangala girl Shangala, stuff. Or Shangala, Shangala boy. Behaviors. Behavior. And hey. then you get married at 50. Hey, hey. thank God forbid now. And, and <laughs> Abraham right. and Sarah. Oh, <laughs> please. Like, <laughs> Abraham and Sarah, Lord. Mm. But yeah, like, literally that's what we just wanted and i really pray that this has edified someone and will help somebody to make that step god has telling you to go don't look back just go just act on that word but yeah you know i never end these episodes without giving somebody the opportunity to give your life to christ giving your life to christ is believing in your heart confessing with your mouth that jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he rose again and the bible says in john 3 3 that unless a man be born again he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you might think, oh no, but I'm a good person. I do good deeds. It's not enough. You need to accept Christ, accept the gift of salvation. So if you are one who is listening and you feel like, I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I just haven't accepted him. Today's the opportunity to give your life to Christ. Um, and if you're one that has given your life to Christ, but you've backslid, you know, you want to renew that, that walk, then also repeat after me. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come to you today as a sinner. Lord, I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again that I may have eternal life. Lord, I repent from my sins and I invite you today into my heart, into my life to be my Lord and personal saviour. Amen. 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 If you have given your life to Christ, guys, heaven is rejoicing. The Bible says heaven rejoices over one sinner that gives their life to Christ. So heaven is rejoicing over you. Mm -hmm. And if you are one who has given your life to Christ, message myself or Tomewa. Our Instagram platforms are going to be written. Or if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, we'll just say it all. Um, my Instagram is officialdd.x and yours. My Instagram is tomiwa.tp. T-O-M-I-W-A dot T-P. Come on, trust me. <laughs> but yeah, guys, this was an amazing episode. Loved every moment of it. It felt so quick as well. We're literally, I don't want the man to come in and lock us off. So <laughs> yeah, um, thank you guys so, so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's, it's been, been a great. pleasure. God, God was here. <laughs> you know, we're not like Jacob. He said, God was here and I didn't know it. God was here and I did know it. Amen. Mm -hmm. But anyways, guys, subscribe. Keep streaming. Follow me. Um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Official DD. Yeah. Follow Tomiwa. All his stuff is there. You know, you've heard his Instagram. You get his right. TikTok. Yeah, he'll be on YouTube. Right. He'll do a podcast. Amen. <laughs> Bye, guys.